Michael Wilbon back here. How are you, Michael? It's been a rough morning, Rich. A rough morning for those of us who seem to go for everybody's going from one unfortunate thing to another. But, this, you know, this is this is particularly sad. While not surprising, at, at, you know, for those of us who knew Coach Thompson and knew he was struggling, had some health challenges, not a surprise, but sad nonetheless. Well, then I greatly appreciate you taking the time on this day, this very morning, to, to share with us uh, your memories of John Thompson and what we what we should remember him for. You're the perfect person to set the stage and 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 set our mindset properly, Michael. Well, you know what, Rich, it's interesting because much of what is going to be said about John Thompson in the next few days, it will be the context of it will be basketball, just like you had, and that is that is the arena in which he operated. I mean, you know, literally and figuratively. Um, because you can go from you know Patrick before Patrick Ewing, mm-hmm. I mean John Thompson got to got to the Elite Eight before he ever recruited Patrick Ewing, and then of course he got the three Final Fours, lost two of the memorable championship games of all time, won one by going through Akeem Olajuwon in Houston, and on down through the Allen, Allen Iverson episode. That, that was at the end of John's coaching career. That was the, he retired in 1999. Iverson left in, two, in 1996. So that's that's the end of the framing of it. But those of us who were around for much more than that, longer than that, uh, so many things come to mind. I mean, he, he's the most fascinating, complex person I, I certainly ever covered, maybe ever met. And I was 21 years old when I got to the Washington Post and was assigned to cover Georgetown basketball, which was not a big deal yet nationally. It was locally. And uh, when I first started covering the team, John wouldn't speak to me. He would not talk to me. And I laugh about it now. I've laughed about it for decades. Because it was part of John's, like, initiation, rite of initiation, rite of passage. You know, he would call, like, he would call each previous, the writers he knew. So he would call Kornheiser and, and, and John Feinstein or Dave Kendrick or uh, and he would say, who was this Will Bond? Who was this kid from Chicago? Who the hell is he? Why should I talk to him? Right. And then, you know, five years later, he called me and said, who is this Mike Freeman? Who is this David Aldridge? Why the hell, <laughs> who's this J.A. Adonde? I'm not talking to him. Nice. And all of us became so impacted. It, it, so five years, to shorten this a little bit, five years after I got that treatment, um, my father died. Um, at the age of 60, my father passed away, lung cancer. It was on March 11th, so it's right in March Madness. I was covering the team, covering Georgetown. I didn't call anybody. I found out my father died, which was expected. I rushed home. I fly home. I walk into my parents' kitchen. My mother's on the phone, and she's on the phone what seems to me to be a long time, considering we had stuff to do. We had affairs to tend to. She finally got off the phone, and I, I said, who, what, why are you on the phone so long? Who was that? She said, I was talking to Coach Thompson. Wow. And I said, what was that about? She said, I'm not telling you what it was about. We had a, we had a great conversation. And I, then I go down to the funeral home, and in the funeral home already, and mind you, I had not called John or anybody in Georgetown. I got on a plane, and I flew home. I get to the funeral home. The minute I get out, I, I you know, leave my parents' house after I get to O'Hare, there's an enormous wreath of flowers, and it says, from John Thompson. And there's another enormous wreath of flowers, and it says, from Georgetown Basketball, mm. as if they aren't one and the same. And everybody in Washington has stories about Big John. You know, I, and I think of them even as I'm talking. Mark Asher, who covered the team for a long time, and Mark was a a character to say the least. He was an interesting character. Most of the people on the post, we at times we just found him so annoying we couldn't deal with him, even though we loved him. Well, he had a kidney transplant, and John Thompson sat in his hospital room overnight. No okay. And you know, again, people would say, "Well, John hated the media. John hated this. He was the most paranoia, paranoia." Right. All these things, these phrases coined. And yet you had all these other things going on. And all of them could be true at some point, by the way. I mean, if you talk to Jackie McMullen, she's going to have a Big John story or five. You know, um, I'll tell you one, one other quick one. Sure. I, one morning he called me at 7 o'clock in the morning and said, hey, get get down here. I said, Coach, what are you doing? He said, just get down here. 
So I go down. He's sitting in a sedan in the front of the parking lot, front parking lot. And I said, Coach, he said, get in. I said, Coach, what are we doing? We were going to look for a guy named Rayful Edmond. You can Google Rayful Edmond. What you're going to find essentially is he was a drug lord, a drug kingpin. And he was trying to get at young kids in Washington who included a freshman, maybe a sophomore, but I think a freshman named Alonzo Morning. Mm. And Big John, in a way that, you know, you can't even think about people doing this. He just put it out there. You need to come see me. You're not getting at any of my kids. You're not getting any kids I can protect. But you need to come see me. And because he didn't go see him immediately, John went looking for him. We went looking for him in John's sedan. Come on. Big John's sedan. I, we're looking at barbershops. We're at church. I mean, we're, we're everywhere in, in, in D.C. and Northeast and Southeast, probably in Northwest. We're everywhere we can go and look for him. We couldn't find him. But I remember sitting in the car thinking, I didn't have the nerve to ask, John, if we find him, what are we, go- what are we doing if we find him? Right. And this is the lens he would go to protect people that mattered to him, which was a lot of people. And I, this, like I said, I have dozens of those stories, personal, professional, about what he meant. And you know what, Rich? Not all that many of them are about basketball. Some of them are. They're tangentially related to Proposition 48 and 42, and the lengths he would go to say this is wrong, the, the, to the lengths he would stand up to the NCAA, to school administrators, the people he thought were taking advantage of their position in life. You know, yeah, I mean, I was around for all those games. I was the beat writer covering the Villanova game. I was, the, I was covering the, the Michael Jordan game. I covered the Akeem Patrick game. All the Chris Mullen games, the games in the Big East that built the Big East. I covered all that stuff. And and yet, the stories I think of, they involve basketball, but some of them don't. <laughs> some of them, a lot of them, most of them don't. I was talking to Kornheiser this morning. Our stories, they wind up being personal, very personal stories about Big John and who he was to his core. I mean, much of what I believe about education and, and athletics comes from, I mean, I was shaped 40 years of knowing him. He didn't have one and dones unless they transferred out because they couldn't take it because he was a demanding man. He was demanding. He was commanding and demanding. You know, people think they know about tough love and all that. They don't know anything about that. Most of today's players who are one and dones and in and out of schools and they're just there to be, you know, roasted and, and, and toasted and they head out, they couldn't play for John Thompson. They couldn't have attended. They couldn't have signed a letter of intent. So, so much of what matters to me today in his passing, the reflection, they have nothing to do with basketball, even though that's the venue. That's the context in which we view his life. Trust me. The, the, the people who were around him the longest um, know that there was so, so, so much, much more than that. 